Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. We are so close to the Labor Day weekend and I am very excited about it. In today's video, I will be going over what's in a graduate school application. If you don't know me, I'm Liz and I am currently a PhD student studying computer science. Last year was my senior year of college and I was an undergrad in computer science and math. So I decided during that last year that I would apply to graduate school to keep my options open. And last week I did a video on my top five reasons why you should consider applying to graduate school. So definitely check that out if you haven't. I wanted to make a video that would have helped me last year as I was trying to figure out the graduate school application process and what goes into it and all the planning. So maybe if you're thinking about applying to get a higher degree, whether it's a master's degree or a PhD, or maybe you wanna to go to dental school or medical school, I hope that this video is helpful to you. And without anything else, let's get started. In order to begin your graduate school application, you must go to the website of the school that you are interested in applying to. And on that website, they will have the graduate resources for you, different information on what's required for the application, as well as a link to start the application. So now, what's in that graduate school application? The application will, of course, require some general information about yourself, like your name and your date of birth, but alongside that, there will be some crucial parts which you will have to turn in. One of those parts is your official transcripts. So depending on when you apply, you may still have a semester left of college or possibly more if you decide to take some courses in the summer. So for me, I applied when I was in my fall semester of my senior year of college. So I still had spring semester and so that wasn't going to be on my transcript. However, they still want that official transcript when you apply just to see how far you've come because you've still had essentially seven semesters of school so they can see how well you're doing as a student. And unfortunately, some schools take a long time to process transcripts. So I would say that is something right away you can do right now because a lot of graduate school applications are competitive in the fall semester. So I ended up applying to a bunch of different programs and most of those applications were due October or September, November, and some in December, and that was to enter for fall the following year. So definitely research your schools that you're interested in and find the deadlines so that you are not late to anything. I also wanted to add that if your GPA, you don't think it's the highest, it might not be the top tier of your school, it might not be the top 5%, it's okay, it's just one part of your application, and you are a whole person, you are not just a number, so don't let that discourage you from applying. The next thing you need to consider is taking a standardized test, such as the GRE, or the GMAT, or the MCAT, or the DAT. So if you don't know what any of those are, the GRE is the general test for graduate school admissions. So for me, when I was going in for my PhD in computer science, that was the main test that I had to take. Now if you're going to a business higher degree, maybe a master's degree, then you can do the GMAT test. And then if you want to go into dental school, you would take the DAT. And if you are interested in medical school, then you would take the MCAT. So if you can plan ahead, I would suggest looking online to plan the test, as well as when you register to take the test, a lot of them have free online tests you can practice with. I never purchased a prep book for the GRE, but it's totally normal for people to take a prep course or buy a prep book, especially for other exams that are very, very lengthy, such as the MCAT. People suggest you prepare before you take that, especially because those tests are not just an investment of your time, but they're an investment of your money. So I believe the GRE is probably the least expensive of all those tests that I mentioned, but I felt that it was necessary for me to take. And I know during the times we're in right now, you might not see that as necessary. And you can always contact your school and say, hey, I don't feel comfortable trying to take this exam outside of my home. And you can see if they make accommodations, but I would definitely look into that, do your research because I felt that it was important for my chances of getting into grad school to have those GRE scores. And because the applications were due in the fall semester, I had to get those scores in right away. So I decided I was going to grad school and I took the test within two weeks after deciding that I was going to apply to grad school. 
The next part of your application that is necessary is letters of recommendation. So you want to have three strong people that you can ask who can speak on your professional and academic capabilities. So I ended up asking three different professors that I knew would write well thought out responses and they have experience with writing letters of recommendation because they're professors so they do it they do it often so it's not the same as if you ask someone who knows you in a professional setting but maybe they don't have the same writing background in order to write a strong letter of recommendation so i would keep that in mind if you are asking different people and it's okay to have a professional that isn't in your academic setting write a letter of recommendation about you but if all three of your letters are from people from a non-academic sense then i would say you want to probably change that and have one or two be from an academic world because you're trying to get into another academic program. Also communicate with your professors if you are applying to multiple grad schools like I did you need to know if they write in their letter of recommendation something personalized to a specific school because the last thing you want is they say oh I'm applying to Stanford and then they send it to schools that are not just Stanford because then the school might look at the letter and be like hmm okay well this person didn't even have a letter of recommendation that referenced the actual school that it was sent to so I would try to make sure that you know if your professors are mentioning the school by name or not because when it comes to integrity you won't be able to read what your professors actually write in the letter of recommendation but you should be able to know faithfully whether they mention a specific school by name or not because you don't want anything jeopardizing your chances of getting into a specific program the next part of the application and perhaps the most important part and the most personable part is your personal statement so this kind of I could do a whole video on what goes into the personal statement because if you've ever applied to college you also had to write a personal statement which kind of can say a little bit on who you are and what you're interested in studying and what makes you an attractive candidate for a school so it doesn't necessarily have to be on specific research goals that you have but it should still give the school an idea that you are a person that they want that you're a person that's going to bring, you know, amazing qualities and interests and curiosity to their program. And also, some schools have something called a statement of purpose. So I had different applications. Some of my applications just wanted the personal statement and others wanted a personal statement and a statement of purpose. The statement of purpose is more geared to specific research goals. Some of the uh, statement of purposes actually asked me to reference specific professors that I wanted to work with and what kind of research I wanted to do. So that definitely required more planning and thought than the personal statement, which I could kind of pretty much use for each of the schools because the different schools I applied to, I was applying to similar programs. So I felt that I would still bring the same, you know, attitude, personality, curiosity, and drive. But then with the statement of purpose, you have to say, these are my specific research goals that I'm going to achieve within the resources of this specific program. So this takes a lot of planning. It might seem overwhelming, but if you start ahead and plan, you can do it and it's going to be fine. The next thing an application may ask from you is a current resume. Having a resume is super important even if you're not applying to graduate school because it makes you look like you can present what you're capable of in a logical and impressive way. So in my college years, I was able to work with a career counselor to fine tune my resume, make it strong. And if you can, I would suggest meeting with someone, maybe an advisor at your school, whether it's a career advisor or an academic advisor, to work with you on your resume to make it competitive because that's kind of where you can show off your skills, your projects that you've worked on or any awards that you've received and maybe you've had an internship and you can touch on that in your resume. So the resume acts as a one sheet synopsis of your skills, your qualifications, the, the things that you've done and the achievements that you've made. And with all that said, having a strong resume is super important for professional success in and outside of college. One of the final steps of the graduate school process may be that you are asked to do an interview. So for me, for my PhD program, I was never asked to do an interview. However, for some people, 
in, you know, if they're going into medical school or dental school, they will have to be interviewed before they are accepted. So if that applies to you, you can research the different questions they may ask you and practice. Maybe you can ask a friend to help you and hey, maybe how the world's looking, it'll be a Zoom interview and maybe that'll take less pressure off of you, who knows? And of course, the last part of the application would be the fee or the fee waiver. So in order to submit your application, it usually costs money because the school has to review all the parts of your application and it goes through many different hands before the final decision is made. So you can find online what kind of uh, cost it is depending on the school and the program they can range from $25 to $150 it kind of depends on how competitive the program is or the school and with that being said there are fee waivers that you can have so if you submit the fee waiver the school can approve you to accept the application and you won't have to worry about paying the fee that concludes this video thank you guys so much for watching what's in the graduate school application I love making advice videos for you, so I will continue to do this every Thursday, and I also, this past Tuesday, did another episode of Tech Touch Up Tuesday, so check that out, and with that, I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. We are so close to Friday, and I'm excited, and I will see you very soon.